Hey guys, it's Pastor Terry Teeson from Adult and Teen Challenge. We're known to do stuff that's crazy and we want to praise God in the park today. We're here in Central Park and if you look around, uh, we got a bunch of guys from the Adult and Teen Challenge program and everyone's got a social distance out here. We're all physically at least six feet apart from each other and we just want to sing a song or two for you today. And so guys, just let's sing it with me. Here we go, everyone, in the eye of the storm, in the eye of the storm. We want to talk to you. I know that a lot of people are going through a lot of difficulties right now. A lot of people are going through situations that are very difficult and heavy because we don't know what the future holds. But let me tell you something. We know who holds the future. And right here at 414 Edmonton Street, lives are still being changed. And so we just want to remind you that we're going to see a victory. Whatever it's going to be, we're going to see a victory because the battle doesn't belong to us. The battle belongs to Jesus. And I hope that you can, you can agree with that here tonight. And so we're just going to sing that. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. Sing it, guys. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve. Just 
pan the camera around. All of these guys probably represent one to three students that are still inside. We just want to thank you for your prayers. We want to thank you for believing in what, what we're doing here. And uh, thank you for uh, watching this. And uh, we just want to know we're praying for you as well. If you have prayer requests, just uh, email us or contact us. We'd love to pray for you. Hallelujah! 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 Oh man, it was cold outside today. <laughs> hey boys, you know what? It's uh, we're back inside again, and we decided that we're gonna do the rest of this inside. There's uh, Jeremiah, there's Abram, and there is Spencer. Spencer, <laughs> awesome. You know what? We're all we're all distance here from each other, not because we hate each other, but because. We love each other enough to respect each other's space. And uh, I just wanted to tell you so much um, that we appreciate just this chance to, to talk with you and to be part of this journey with, uh, with your church and uh, with the believers around the world right now. Um, God is still moving here. We just feel like we need to keep our doors open, but just to follow all the rules and regulations of what's going on with, uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic. My name is Sam Ginter. Uh, I'm from Riding Mountain, Manitoba. Uh, I come in Teen Challenge uh, almost a year ago now. Uh, I came in struggling with addictions to a bunch of different drugs. Um, started all off with marijuana and drinking and partying. Uh, and then it just started to spiral out of control. Um, I, like I said, I come in Teen Challenge about a year ago and they've helped me to realize that um, I don't need to rely on all that sort of stuff to uh, deal with my anxiety, uh, my stress and all the things that life throws at you. Um, through the program I have uh, been able to gain support from a lot of the brothers here as well as the staff members. Uh, as well as grow, um, not only grow myself, but uh, grow as a, as a family with my with my own family back home. Uh, the amount of support and things that they show me now um, is just it's just amazing what uh, what God can do in a short amount of time here. A uh, verse that I uh, I like to carry around with me, Philippians 4:13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Um, and I just like to carry that around and remember that daily because it's. Uh, you know, I've tried to do things my own way um, my whole life and it got me nowhere. Um, but now that I rely on Christ to help me throughout my days, uh, I realize that I can literally do anything. Yeah. What does the future hold? Um, yeah, so the future now um, for me is actually a future. Before I had a lot of dreams and aspirations, I, that's all they were, is that they were just dreams. Um, but now, I, uh, now they can be realities um, and just see what the Lord has for me. Teen Challenge is a place, like like I said, where I saw the, not only the truth of God, but the power of God. I, I saw God moving, and I saw God working in my life and in the lives of those around me. Before coming to Teen Challenge, I didn't believe I was worth saving. I thought that I had um, done the worst of the worst, that I, I didn't qualify. One of my favorite things to see is when someone comes to Adult and Teen Challenge broken and to watch them within a few weeks be brought back to life. There's nothing like it. Before Teen Challenge, I was just lost in my selfishness, uh, my addictions my needs, my wants, and uh, I sought out help and my Auntie Jay actually uh, revealed Adult and Teen Challenge to me, which I immediately, without hesitation, took that opportunity to go and do the program. So um, I came in with a lot of questions, a lot of doubts, I wasn't sure, um, but I don't even think I made it a, f a week and I decided to accept Jesus into my life and my life has not been the same since. God showed up. He met me here, and 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 it's one thing to know the truth. It's another another thing to have an encounter with Jesus and to to feel His love and to sense His presence and uh, to see Him work in your life in ways that you can't do it on your own. There's not just a few testimonies. I see miracles every day at this at this ministry because you see people dead or paralyzed be raised from the dead or, you know, be given a new life and, and being able to walk and to run and to grow. 
Beyond all popular belief, these guys and women of the program, their heart is actually in the right place. That's why it's so comfortable here that you can make mistakes and you're not going to be condemned for it. And again, God shows up and he he works through the ministry team and, and uh, in churches we see a move and, and we see people's countenance changes and, and, and people getting great with God. When I was struggling, I wished I had somebody to tell me that there's a way out, that um, there is freedom from this. And um, I really wish somebody would have told me that anything about what Jesus did for me and what um, what kind of life I actually had, because if no one would have told me that, I wouldn't be here right now, you know? He's given me a purpose. He's given me a future. He's given me a plan. And now I just work at dying to myself so I don't feel unworthy, but know that I'm called to something special. Since being in the program, what I learned is God didn't want to change my situation. He wanted to change me. And, and when he changes me, that changes everything. And so I am learning this time in my life how I am worthy, and I'm trying to receive that love of God daily. One of our global family members, he said recently, he said the word Corona actually um, means crown. And you know what, friends, we know who wears the crown. And so, uh, um, you know, if you look around the room right now, I'm just going to slide here. I'm going to show you. You look around the room. Um, Spencer, where are you from, Spencer? I'm from Drayton Valley, Alberta. Alberta. Where are you from, Abram? Where were you born? I was from, I'm from Mexico. Mexico. And Jeremiah, where are you from? Winnipeg. Winnipeg. And, uh, you know, you know, it's, it's interesting when you look at how many different places that we come from, there's one common denominator that brought us here today, and that's the word desperation. And we needed to see what Jesus could do in our lives, and we needed to be convinced that something better could happen in our lives. And, you know, there's this really amazing story. No matter where we come from, uh, there's this amazing story uh, in the Bible that reminds us that it doesn't matter where we've come from. It just matters where we're going. And when you come to Jesus... Uh, there's level ground. There's level ground for um, for the place where Jesus is. In Luke chapter 8, there is, uh, starting at verse 40, there's this there's a really amazing story. It says, on the other side of the lake, the crowds welcomed Jesus because they had been waiting for him. Then a man named Jairus, a leader of the local synagogue, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come home with him. His only daughter, who was about 12 years old, was dying. As Jesus went with him, he was surrounded by the crowds. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding, and she could find no cure. Coming up behind Jesus, she touched the fringe of his robe. You talk about violating physical distance, right? She touched his robe and immediately the bleeding stopped. Who touched me, Jesus asked. That often happens nowadays with this coronavirus. We're all asking ourselves, who touched us? Who touched me, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and Jesus says that, and everyone denied it. And Peter said, Master, this whole crowd is pressing up against you. In verse 46, but Jesus said, someone deliberately touched me, for I felt healing power come out of me. When the woman realized that she could not stay hidden, she began to tremble and fell to her knees in front of him. The whole crowd heard her explain why she touched him and that she had been immediately healed. Daughter, he said to her, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he was still speaking to her, a messenger arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. He told him, your daughter is dead. There's no use troubling the teacher now. You know, uh, we know how that story ended. Jesus, Jesus showed up and he, and he healed the daughter of Jairus. Um, you know, it's interesting. This story really has been very powerful for me because, because here we have a woman who has probably been rejected by society. If we, if we would think about the culture that she lived in, the Jewish culture, we know that the uh, commands of the Old Testament were that if, that if a woman had issues of blood, issues of bleeding, it, um, a lot of people, even if it wasn't menstrual related for her, she probably was rejected and because it would have been misunderstood. And you think about the fact that, that she took the risk of all of the uh, perceptions of society 
and she went and she she presented herself and pushed through the crowds mm. so that she could see Jesus. What an amazing thought. And here she was um, meeting face to face with Jairus, who was the leader of a synagogue. And so when you're the leader of a synagogue, that means you have power, you have influence, you have resources. And yet he was just as desperate for the help of Jesus. That story has really stuck out for me because here you have someone that was completely rejected, somebody that was completely, um, you know, uh, thrown off of society and no one wanted to accept her. And she comes face to face with Jesus mm -hmm. in the same way that Jairus, the leader of the synagogue, did. Friends, I want to tell you today that at Adult and Teen Challenge, we believe that when it comes to Jesus, there is level ground. And we want to tell you that um, even if you're watching this at home, it doesn't matter because we all need Jesus. We all need a chance to encounter the King of Kings, the one that went to the cross for us. And, and I think that in this time, in this day and age, when everyone is told to physically distance themselves from everybody, it's amazing how important it is for us to not distance ourselves from Jesus because he's the only person on this earth right now who is still allowed to completely enter into your home <laughs> and to completely touch your life and uh, Jesus doesn't follow social distancing um, regulations because he's the only one that can be our hope in this world. I want to tell you a couple things that um, that really stuck out for me. Um, you know the first thing I want to tell you today is with Jesus you're on level ground. You know, there's no single equalization factor. Yeah, there you are, Spencer. <laughs> Spencer, with Jesus, you're on level ground. Amen, right? brother. <laughs> and there's no greater equalization factor than Jesus Christ in the kingdom, in the entire world. No one on the entire earth has enough money to gain an edge on Jesus. Nobody has enough resources to get closer to him than the poorest person. Because with Jesus, it's level ground. Um, Matthew 20, or Matthew 11, 28 to 30, Jesus said, he said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you te and let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden that I give you is light. You know, the second thing I want to tell you is it's more than just a good theory. Um, when you meet Jesus then um, he doesn't just want to be your theory. He wants to be your practical solution for everyday life. You can't just talk about it. You know, um, God says in the Bible, he says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, but do not the things that I say? You know, God wants us to be more than just sayers. He wants us to be doers. And number three, be willing to do what it takes. I love the story of the woman because she pressed through the crowd. She overcame social obstacles. She overcame all of the judgment around her. And she pressed through so that she could touch Jesus. What a powerful thought. And the last thing I want to tell you is that he's going to do it. Whatever, whatever you're going through right now, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says, To him who is able to do immeasurably more than everything that we ask or imagine according to his power that's at work within us. We just want to thank you for being part of this. Uh, we know that, um, that everyone's going through a difficult time right now. Adult and Teen Challenge is no exception. We, we're making difficult decisions every single day right now. Um, we're, um, obviously, there's a big financial uh, hit that happens to our ministry. If you're considering being part of that, and maybe God has been nudging you to help out an organization that's helping people more, I encourage you to consider uh, supporting us. We could really use um, some extra backing in these times, even just a one-time gift. Um, there's a, there's a, a website below here that you can uh, visit or a phone number. Um, we just want to thank you that, that you believe in, in the work that's being done for people like Jeremiah, people like... Abram. There he is, Abram. <laughs> people like Abram and people like Spencer. <laughs> and uh, these guys have had a good sense of humor about this and everyone's at least six feet away from each other but here's the thing we are close and we are bonded in our hearts and so uh, if you want to be part of this let us know but you know more even more importantly than that let us know how we can pray for you mm -hmm. this uh, this building here is full of men that uh, that are seeing their lives changed but we believe that 
God wants to do something for you through us as well. Thanks a lot, friends, and God bless you. Thanks for your time and for uh, being willing to watch us today.